Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at a topic that I think you're going to find very interesting, and that's the HSV color space and what you can do with it. So we're typically used to working with RGB, so that's red, green and blue, but that's not the only way that images can be encoded. And one of the really useful options is HSV, which stands for Hue, Saturation and Value. So the point of this tutorial is to show you some of the things you can do with HSV. Now, you can't actually do it with the built-in Apple tools, but you can if you use this which is a plugin I have made exclusively for my Patreon subscribers and which is being generously hosted by FX Factory. So thank you, FX Factory. And what this does is it allows you to convert from RGB to HSV and back again. Now, for complicated reasons, it's not technically 100% accurate, but it's plenty good enough for our purposes here. And I think you'll find it pretty useful. So one of the uses of HSV is it enables four blend modes that are not otherwise available to Apple users. And those are hue, saturation, color, and luminosity. You'll find them in Photoshop and After Effects and indeed DaVinci Resolve, but not in Final Cut or Motion. But they can be surprisingly useful. So let's take a look at what we're talking about. So I'm going to apply the HSV filter to my clip. It's over here in Simon's effects. So I'm going to drag it onto this clip here and everything's gone very weird. But what we're going to do is we're going to drag it also onto the enclosing group like that. And if we come over to the inspector, you'll see that the default mode is RGB to HSV, but we can switch to HSV to RGB like so. And we're, now we're back to normal. So what we've done is switched into HSV color mode and then switched back out of it. So coming back to the filter, you'll see that there are three checkboxes which allow us to enable or disable any one of the hue, value, saturation and value. And that's what we're going to be using for this. But first of all, let's just take a look at what's happening in this crazy color space. If I just turn off this group HSV and we look at the individual channels. So I can do that by selecting the red, green and blue. So if we look at the red, which is the hue, that's the hue of the image isolated. If we look at the green, this is the saturation of the image. And finally, if we look at the blue, this is the brightness of the image. So the first blend mode that I want to look at is hue, and I'm going to copy this HSV onto this gradient here, and I'm going to turn it on. So that's the gradient. Obviously, we're going into HSV and back out again with the group filter. So to get hue, we are going to use the hue of this gradient and the other channels of the background. So I'm going to turn off the saturation and value for the gradient. And coming back into here, I'm going to turn off the hue for the background. And then I'm going to select the gradient and I'm going to set its blend mode to add. And now you'll see, hopefully, that we've got the hue of the gradient applied to our image. So all the hue of the original image has disappeared and we've only got the gradient hue. So now let's look at saturation and we're going to do something similar. So we're going to take the saturation of the gradient so let's turn that on, disable the hue. And we are going to dis disable the saturation of the background and turn back on its hue. And now you'll see we're getting a very, very vibrant image because the saturation is being driven by the gradient, which obviously is very saturated. If you look, we've got maximum saturation there. But if I were to take this color here and take out its saturation, it takes out the saturation from the background image. So that's saturation. So next I want to look at color. And the interesting thing about color is it uses actually two channels of the foreground image and only one channel of the background image. So for our foreground, our gradient, we're going to turn on both the hue and the saturation. And for our background, we're going to turn on the saturation and turn off the hue. And now you can see that we've got something that's similar to what we saw with Hue on its own, but we've got all the color information from the gradient. In other words, both its Hue 
and its saturation. And color is a blend mode that is very often used for grading purposes. And for that, we would need to turn back on the hue of the original image, and we would need to reduce the opacity of our overlay. But you can see how we can introduce some of the interesting colors of that gradient just by increasing the opacity of this layer. So that is color. Let's finally come on to luminosity. So I'm going to set that opacity all the way back up again. So luminosity, obviously, we are going to disable the value of the background, enable the value of the foreground, and turn off the other two channels. And this is really not a huge amount of use to us in this kind of configuration. But I want to show you a different possible use of it. So what I'm going to do is turn off that gradient and I'm going to duplicate my background layer and I'm going to set its blend mode to add and I'm going to turn on its value and turn off its hue and saturation. So obviously that takes us back to our original image, which is not much use. But if we come to color and levels, now bearing in mind that our value channel, our luminosity channel is the blue, we're going to select blue from here. And then whatever we do to the blue channel is going to affect the brightness of the background image. So if, for example, we were to do this, you can see we're brightening up the highlights. If we were to do this, we're crunching down the blacks. If we do this, we're lifting up the blacks. And if we do this, we're simply reducing the overall brightness. So you might think that's just a normal grading process, but if you think about it, normally what you're doing is you're affecting all three channels. And if you do something like this of crunching the contrast, it changes the hue and saturation, and you need to make compensation for that. But here we're literally only affecting the brightness and nothing else. And, and that makes it a very useful operation. So those are the four blend modes, but now I want to show you some other uses. So I'm going to turn off this layer here and let's turn back on the value for this channel here. So what I'm going to do is come to filters and color and channel mixer. And now the channel mixer becomes a hue, saturation and value controller. So if we were to take the red, which is the hue, we can do something very curious, which is to cycle through the hue like this. So let's reset that. If we grab the green and we adjust that, you can see that's a saturation control. Going below zero creates some very, very weird effects. Uh, you might like them, but they're, they're pretty anomalous. So mostly you want to stick above zero for this. And if we grab the blue, then remember this is the value, you can see we're just adjusting the brightness of the image. It's not giving us as much control as when we split the image into two, as you can see, but this is just an overall brightness control. And now if you think about it, this is really just the same as if we were to apply filters, color and hue saturation. So here's the hue. You can see we cycle the hue like that. That was exactly the same as what we were doing when we were adjusting that red slider. If we adjust the saturation, obviously that increases or decreases the saturation, just as we were doing with the green channel. And adjusting the value gives us the same result as adjusting the blue channel of our channel mixer. So now I think you can see what's ha actually happening under the hood of this hue saturation filter. So that's really quite interesting. So I'm just going to delete most of that. Don't want the hue saturation, don't want the channel mixer. So we're just looking at this layer here, the background layer with the hue saturation filter on it. And I'm going to come to filters and color and color curves. Now, if we target the blue, this is obviously the brightness of the image. And instead of being limited to just bringing it up and down globally, we can use the curves to create more interesting grading effects like this. So I'm doing an S curve there, just, just for example. So that's a really quite useful grading technique. And again, we're not affecting the hue or saturation as we would be if we were using the color curves on its own. So just to show you that difference, I've thrown on the color curves here which does the same sort of S-curve on the Luma. So if I turn off this correction here, we turn on this correction, you can see they're very different in terms of how this one has affected the color. 
So let's just turn that off and look at another practical application. And that's to correct a chromatic aberration. Now, there isn't actually particularly chromatic aberration in this shot, but you'll probably know that chromatic aberration is the kind of fringing you often get when the camera's lens is out of whack. And it's a pretty annoying thing. But with this method, there is in fact actually quite a nice fix for it. And we can do that just with one layer of this plugin. So let's select our background layer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to come to filters, blur, and channel blur. Where are we? Channel blur there. The nice thing about channel blurs is it allows us to blur the channels independently. And because we've split ourselves off into HSV space, red, green, and blue are now hue, saturation, and value. So what we can actually do is we can blur the hue and the saturation, but not the value. So we would turn off the blue, and then we would blur the hue and saturation. As I say, you're not going to see anything really useful with this image. I'm just kind of talking you through it. What it does is it, it blurs the color information, but not the sharpness. And that's a way of getting rid of that chromatic aberration. You tend to use a very, very small blur amount instantly for that. But while we've got this set up, I want to show you that we can do something really interesting, which is to have a lot of blur. So I'm going to really push it. And you see we're now getting this kind of nice watercolor effect where the colors are smearing into each other, but we're still getting that sharpness from that value channel, from the luminance. And that is actually a really rather nice effect, I think. So there are plenty more uses you can find for the HSV color space if you Google them. I'm going to leave you to, with just one more, and that's sharpening. So to show you what I mean, I'm going to turn off that channel blur. I'm going to come to the top of my group, and I'm going to add sharpen and unsharp mask. And I think I'm just going to zoom in to this area here with the Kirin sign. And if we increase the radius like that, you can see that the colors are being smeared outwards and it's not very attractive. So we can approach this a different way. So I've deleted everything except my original layer and the two filters. And I'm going to duplicate the layer. And again, we're going to switch the top layer to add. So what we want to be doing is applying the unsharp to the value only. So I'm going to turn off hue and saturation for this. And I'm going to turn off value for the background layer. And I'm going to select my foreground layer and come to filters and sharpen and unsharp mask. And now, no matter how much we increase the sharpness, we're not getting that same blurring. I mean, obviously our image is, has got quite a lot of compression artifacts in it and is not terribly smooth, but you can see we can push the unsharp mask to the max because we're only affecting the value and not the hue and the saturation. And that's a really useful sharpening technique that is only available if you have this option. So that's only a taster of some of the possibilities, but hopefully you've seen that there is a lot that we can now do once we're in this magical HSV color space. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.